I have before me the Acer Predator Triton 14 versus the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. Two thin light laptops that are great for on the go creators that need a good punch of performance. Now they both have the RTX 4070 GPUs. Now the X13 has 32 gigs of RAM where the Acer Triton 14 has 16 gigs of RAM. We have an Intel i7-13700H with the Acer Triton 14 and we have a Ryzen 9 7940HS for the X13. So the question is, which one is going to perform better for your needs? Now we're gonna get into the usability and the build quality of these two laptops, check out some different tests that I've run from an audio sample, webcam, etc. Then we're gonna get into the performance benchmarks. So first and foremost, let's check out the thin and lightness of each laptop. As you can see, the X13 is gonna be thinner and also a little bit lighter. This is a magnesium alloy chassis for the Asus model versus an aluminum chassis for the Acer Triton 14. So if you want thin and light on the go friendliness, you're gonna to wanna to go for the X13. This is like a ninja laptop. It's so thin, it's so light. It's got such a great form factor. Now taking a look at the port, you can see we have the ROG mobile port here. You can plug in years past the RTX 3090 into this laptop. You can plug in a Radeon GPU, and I'm pretty sure they have an RTX 4090 coming out that can plug into this laptop and take this thing to a powerhouse level of performance. That is not an option on the Acer Triton 14. Now we have a USB type C port embedded into that XG mobile. So you technically have two USB type C ports on the X13, a micro SD card reader, HDMI, and a headphone jack. On the Triton 14, we have a USB type C, USB type A, and your dedicated power adapter, where you will not have a dedicated power adapter on the X13. So you will have one of your USB type C ports taken up by the power adapter. Now on the other side panel, we have HDMI, USB type A, and a headphone jack. And then we have a USB type C and a USB type A on the X13. Keep in mind, we also have an SD card reader, a micro SD card reader on the front side of the keyboard deck for the 14. So you can expand the storage of the laptop using that micro SD card reader, same as the X13. Keep in mind, these are both not upgradable in regards to the RAM configuration. You have no access to the RAM on either laptop, both soldered to the motherboard. However, you do have access to an M.2 slot that comes occupied on both laptops. So you can swap that out for a larger SSD inside of your laptop, or don't even open the bottom of the laptop, just slide in that micro SD card to expand the storage of your laptop. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name, your personal email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. We've been using Aura to monitor our personal information online for over a year now and have been able to reclaim control of our personal data. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. You can use my link by going going to aura.com slash Kaiser to try a two week free trial to see how many data brokers are sharing your information. Aura's app also features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitor, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need all inside one app. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial with my link in the video description. In regards to the screens, they both come with great screens. We have a QHD screen on the X13 that gets 515 nits of brightness with 100% sRGB, 90% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a delta E of 0.94. And then for the Acer Triton 14, we have 492 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3, all at a delta E of 0.81. And this is a mini LED display on the Acer Triton 14. So both have great displays, really just depends on what you're looking for. You have more of a matte display on the Triton 14 and a glossy display on the X13. Keep in mind, this is a two-in-one laptop. So if you're a digital artist or photographer, you wanna do touch-ups with a pen, this would be a great option. As you can see, using the pen, I have a, a, some B-roll popping up on the screen. You can see that the pen is very touch sensitive, you draw a thin line and a thick line to based on the pressure you apply. It's a great screen for using a pen and I'm using the Asus Pen 2.0 uh, while I'm testing out this laptop. 
Now taking a look at the interior of the laptop, you can see the big advantage for the X13 is gonna be the large trackpad. Comparing the two trackpads head to head, you can see it is substantially bigger. It's not huge difference, but it is noticeably bigger compared to the two. It's very nice glass trackpad. I love the trackpad on the X13. Definitely a step up above the Triton 14. Now the keyboards are really nice. Both have a medium key press. However, I do like the X13 that it has a full size shift key on the right. You will hear me talk over and over and over about how much I love and require a full size shift key because I constantly am hitting the up arrow key if I don't have a full size shift key and that drives me crazy when using any keyboard. So my vote goes to the X13 as far as the trackpad and keyboard is concerned all the way. Uh, here's a quick audio sample of me using both keyboard and trackpads. You can hear what they sound like. And here's a sample of the webcams in use so you can see what those look and sound like. This is the webcam on the Acer Predator Triton 14 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13 from 2023 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And of course, here's an audio sample of both the speakers in use so you can hear those as well. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of either of these laptops, you can head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the battery life is one area that definitely leans people towards a purchasing decision. And if you want better battery life, I would lean towards the X13. With the HS series processor, you're gonna have a more effective efficient, lower TDP power draw processor, which is going to provide you with better battery life. And you have a little bit more customization inside the Asus Armory Crate Center, providing you with really good control of the CPU and GPU. You're able to really tweak the settings. I usually set it to eco mode with the fan modes on silent. I turn the brightness down to 20%. I press Windows Battery Saver mode and then set the screen refresh rate to 60 hertz. Now I do most of those things that I can on the Asus Armory Crate, but I just noticed that it really affects it more over on the X13 than it did on the Predator Triton 14. Both had good battery life, but the X13 had great battery life. So if you're looking for the best battery life, I would lean towards the X13. Keep in mind, you will not have access to the GPU while using my battery life settings, but it will give you the best possible. Get to where you're going, plug in your laptop to the charger, and you'll have full performance of the laptop. Without further ado, let's jump into the performance benchmarks, starting out with Geekbench single core and multi-core. You can see that the X13 and the Triton 14 are neck and neck for single core performance. Now jump on into multi-core performance, and you can see that the Triton 14 actually has a bit of an advantage above the X13 by about a thousand points for Geekbench. Now looking at Cinebench R23 single core, you can see that the X13 actually falls down the chart a little bit compared to the Triton 14 inside of Cinebench R23 single core, but in multi-core they end up switching and you see a little bit better performance out of the X13 by about a hundred points. But let's go ahead and break out into the real world benchmarks, check out Photoshop. As you can see the Triton 14 scores a 958 versus the X13 at 1,133 points. A lot of that performance is actually due to the 32 gigs of RAM, not necessarily the processor. Photoshop loves RAM and therefore having double the RAM has given us much improved performance over the Triton 14. But like we mentioned earlier, you cannot upgrade the RAM on the Triton 14, so you're gonna be stuck at that score with the laptop. Now moving on to After Effects, you can see that the Acer Triton 14 has an 883 versus the X13 at a 967. Once again, that's gonna be due to the RAM being 32 gigs whereas the Triton is 14 because they both have RTX 4070 GPUs and they both have fairly equally matched CPUs. 
All right, now moving on into Blender Classroom. This is where we should see things align super neck and neck. However, the Triton 14 really steps it up and shows off here. We have an 819 from the X13 and we have a 1055 from the Triton 14. So a big difference there. We're seeing some performance optimization with Intel and that RTX 4070 in the Triton 14 as opposed to the X13. So if you're a Blender user, the Triton 14 is going to be the pick in my opinion. Now looking at Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, as well as SolidWorks, you're gonna see an advantage from the Triton 14. So if you're gonna be using your laptop for 3D modeling, I would definitely recommend the Triton 14 over the X13. Now taking a look at video editing, going down to 6K B-RAW, looking at the playback here. This is where we're gonna see which laptop handles more stress from a 6K resolution perspective. Both do well in 4K, zero drop frames, 6K is where the test really comes in, and these things could not be more neck and neck. 120 versus 122 drop frames out of the 16,177 in the project. Now looking at 6K red footage, the X13 is gonna have a slight advantage at around 1,548 drop frames versus the Triton 14 at 2,567. So for 6K, you're gonna see a bit of an advantage from playback from the X13. Now, as we go ahead and look at the X13 for export time for 6K B-RAW, you're gonna have a one minute disadvantage by choosing the X13 over the Triton 14, about 18 minutes versus 19 minutes. But I would say for 4K, it is neck and neck. Two minutes and 37 seconds versus two minutes and 15 seconds. Both laptops will handle 4K very well. Taking a look at DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna have an advantage by going with the Triton 14 almost two minutes. You can see four minutes and one second out of the Triton 14 and five minutes and 46 seconds out of the X13. So if you're a DaVinci Resolve user, I would push you towards the Triton 14. Now punch for punch, if I was gonna purchase one of these two laptops, I would lean towards the X13. But keep in mind, it's gonna be the more expensive laptop. Last I checked, the configurations that I have before me were sitting at about $2,500 for the X13 versus about $2,000 for the Triton 14. But again, you can check the live prices in the description below. But I just really like the portability, the flexibility of the two-in-one laptop, the larger trackpad, like the full-size shift key. I like the, the glossy display. It just feels like a more premium laptop. But if you want a performance punch, and you want a better price point, the Triton 14 is gonna be your pick. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and click or tap the screen here for more videos if you're not quite ready to make a purchase but need more help with that decision. I'll see you here in the next one.